so much of life we're missing out on when we don't have a close relationship with Jesus. John says in John 15, 14 through 15, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. So for one, we can never have or even approach God without this relationship with Jesus. And this is Jesus calling us his friends. The righteousness of Christ is what makes us worthy to stand before God and a holy God at that. So until we repent of a wrong way of life and live in the righteousness of Christ, we can't experience this friendship with God. And it's just amazing to think that the almighty king of the universe would say, I no, lo no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. So let's live in this blessing and let's not just settle for a shallow or impersonal experience of God just because of our own apathy or unbelief. Please join us in singing what a friend we have in Jesus. Let's 
to the Lord and pray. Do thy friends despise for safety? Take it to the Lord and pray. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a soul experience your presence in our lives, making us every day more like you. We know that you alone are worthy of praise, and help us live lives that prove this, and we wouldn't have any idols in our lives that we would subtly separate us from you. We lift up this service in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Worship at Palms West Presbyterian Church online this morning. My name is Ruff and I have the privilege of being the lead pastor here. And this is our Director of Family Ministries, Melanie. Melanie, how are you doing this morning? Good morning. I am very encouraged to have you back in the chair, Ruff. And how was your week off? Uh, a week <laughs> off. It was good. Got to do some different things. Yeah. But I'm coming back with a lot of confidence. Confidence. A Somebody confidence. watched the sermon. I did Thank you for times. watching, Ruff. That, that, sermon last that encourages me. Oh, good, good. Well, Melly and I are going to talk a little bit about something that's very important to us, and that is the topic of encouragement this morning. And we live in a world that has a critical need for encouragement because there is such a spirit and such an underlying negativity just coming from you from all directions, just underlying almost everything that we do. There's a low-lying negativity and just about everything that's going on. And it starts pretty early on in our life, doesn't it, Oh, Melanie? for sure. When you send your kids off to school and they come home, well, when we used to send our kids to school. When well, we send them to the kitchen table. <laughs> now, yes, 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 now just the other room. <laughs> but when you, remember back last year when you would send your kid to school and then they would come home but, and really discouraged because they weren't picked uh, during recess to play on the, kick, the kickball team. Or maybe when they go to middle school or high school and they're not in those advanced classes and they feel like their friends are smarter than them. They feel like yeah. they're j just kind of aren't smart enough or they, they feel discouraged. You know, or really now... I would not want to be a teenager with social media right now. It is so right. it is so tough. You know, you post a picture, you don't get as many likes as your friend's picture, or you don't have as many followers on Instagram as your friends do. I mean, 
Social media makes it really tough. Not like when we were when we were kids in school. Don't don't you remember? You know, we wouldn't post pictures. We would pass out pictures. You remember when you get your pictures after your school pictures, and it was like a sheet of wallet, and you would cut them up, and you'd write notes to your friends. You knew you were popular based on how many pictures you got on picture day. You know, if you had a load of, of, fi- of pictures, you had a load of friends. You know, it's funny. I I had five pictures in my wallet. It was it was our family picture. My three brothers and you. <laughs> I know. Well, you were very popular, Ruffin. No, no, <laughs> with it wasn't. Me. He was popular okay, with all right, me. Gotcha. All right. But you know what? Today, it's it's kind of like there's data. There's like this constant stream of data telling you whether you're you're like proof whether you're po- proof whether you're popular or not based on how many likes you get or how many followers you get. It's tough. It really is, and it continues on into adulthood. If you think about, it, if you own a small business or you finish a project where you work and you go and you present it and you get some critical feedback, um, it really lays you low. I mean, if you go for a new launch and things don't go as well as you expected them to, um, you feel really discouraged and really bad about yourself. If you've got kids, have you ever been sitting around the dinner table at a holiday dinner with your in-laws or with your parents, and they make some comments about the behavior of your kids and how you're parenting them, and then your kids agree with your parents or your in-laws, and everybody just feels discouraged and downtrodden at that point. You know, how about this one? I mean, you, you get a new pair of pants, and you, you look in the mirror before you leave, and you're like, this pair of pants looks awesome on me, and you walk out the door, and you go to the office, and the first person that sees you says, oh, <laughs> you got some new pants there, and you're just like, what are they saying? It's like, ooh, or ah, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, man. Or you your just... wife says, are you wearing those today? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're wearing to work? <laughs> yes, I, I get it, I get it, I get it, but you know, it seems like it's just normal on a normal day There is just a lot of negativity that comes our way in our lives, and we've just gotten used to it. It's just normal kind of every single day. Mm -hmm. Yes, we live in a world full of negativity. And so today I think we need to hear some good news, and we're going to focus on the good news, and that is God's word. And we're going to use it to renew our minds to, to say what? To do what? And that is to stay positive. We're going to use his word to stay positive. So that's the Bible verse, Romans 12, 2. So we're going to take a look at Romans 12, 2, which is do not conform to the patterns of this world. So what are the patterns of this world? There's a lot of negativity. We're not going to conform to that. But we are going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, and then we will, I'm sorry, let me continue. Then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is. What is God's will? It is good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, when Paul wrote this, the word mind, he uses the Greek word for brain. But it's not like the, the organ, your brain. It's talking about mm. your thinking, the way you think, the way you process. Sometimes we'll say to people, use your brain. Now, we're not telling them, take your brain out of your skull and solve that math problem. We're just telling you to think about it. And that's what Paul's saying. He wants you to think about whatever, whatever the world is saying. I want you, he wants you to think about it in a different way, to process the information differently. So if, you are a, if you're a computer person, wouldn't you just love to be able to fix your processor every day, to renew your processor every day? Well, we can do that. We can renew our brain every day with God. So today we're going to talk about something that I believe God wants every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ to do. And this is what I think God is calling us to do, to be encouragers. God is calling us to be encouragers. You know, a few weeks ago, we started off the sermon series, and you had said, this is, I think, the greatest quote, to to feed your faith and to starve your fear. Absolutely. God gives us so many good things. We need to lean on the goodness of God. So there is, you know, feed your faith, starve your fear. Second week, we are, God calls us to be thankful in all circumstances and not to be complainers. And then last week we talked, or I talked, I guess, about the confidence in God's plan that we are to have god fidence because God's plan is good. His will is good and pleasing and perfect. So I want to submit that I believe that, God, that the, one of the most spiritual things we can do 
I mean, one of the most spiritual things we can do, a spiritual experience, is to encourage somebody else. And I'm going to say it again. The most spiritual thing that we can do is to build others up and encourage them and to lift those up that are around us. You know, we see in Scripture that we serve, and this is so profound, that we serve an encouraging God. We serve an encouraging God. And I would submit to you today that encouragement is an intrinsic part of God's character. We're created in God's image. God says in Genesis that God created us in his image, and we should be encouraging others as well. As a matter of fact, I love what Paul says to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 5 and 6, and here's what he has to say about God. He says, when we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. Do any of you feel tired? You feel like there's no rest for you anywhere. He goes on, we faced conflict from every direction with battles on the outside. And friends, we experience a lot of conflicts today, even when, we're, when it's not, it feels like we're surrounded by conflict and it, it derives a reaction from within us. And it says, um, with battles on the outside and that reaction inside of us is fear on the inside. Battles on the outside and fear on the inside. It really describes so many of our lives right now. There are so many battles going on. I didn't expect that. I'm really nervous about that. I'm afraid of what's going to happen next year or what's even going to happen next week. We've got battles on the outside and fear on the inside. And then we have in verse 7, a great but God. Mm -hmm. And whenever you see a but God in scripture, something amazing, yeah. something nuclear yeah. is getting ready to happen. So here's what God, here's what Paul says about God. He says, but God who encourages those who are discouraged encouraged us by the arrival of Titus. Mm -hmm. So friends, the scriptures tell us, and Paul tells us here, that an intrinsic part of God's makeup, of God's personality, is that he encourages the discouraged. And how did he do it in this particular spot? He sent Paul a friend. He sent somebody to be with him. He sent him a brother in the faith, Titus. And isn't it true? Some of the times when we're most discouraged, all it takes is the presence of a friend to show up. And we are Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> the presence of a friend. You moved me to encourage you. <laughs> Show up. Thank you. I, I, I need it. I need it to encourage us today. So we have some good news. God loves to encourage those who feel discouraged. And in fact, I want to tell you today that part of our mission, part of our calling in God is this, to be people who encourage those who we're discouraged as part of our daily discipline, our daily life. We are to be encouragers of people around us. As a matter of fact, there's small ways that we can encourage folks in our lives, aren't right. there? Right, absolutely. And I think when we're when we were thinking about this, just kind of talking it through, I think one of the greatest ways that I've experienced feeling encouraged is mm -hmm. knowing when somebody knows my name, when I walk up and somebody knows my name, and it kind of made me feel a little convicted because I am terrible with names. I confess I am not great with names, and I. I'll tell you a little secret. Sometimes I use shortcuts and maybe use nicknames. Or, for example, there was a grandma who would bring her grandson over to Sunday school. And I didn't know her very well at first. And I just started calling her grandma because that's what her, her grandson called her. Hey, grandma. So I would greet her as, hi, grandma. We had a great day in Sunday school. You know, as time went on, I just continued to call her grandma whenever I saw her. Well, one day she was volunteering for an event, and I greeted her by name. I was like, good morning, Beulah. How are you? And, and she goes, wow, I didn't know you knew my name. So, Beulah, if you're watching, I know your name. <laughs> but I just, it just kind of reminded me how important it is to call people by name, how encouraging it is that that person knows you that personally to, to call you by name, that you have that intimate relationship with them, and you, it is encouraging to hear them call you by name. You know, our God calls us by name. Yeah, you know, um, there are other subtle ways, not just remembering remembering people's names or having someone remember your name. And I, I know that's, I've heard that from so many people at church and, and in, in public and in business, 
that when you remember their name, I mean, they just feel a personal connection mm -hmm. with you. But there are other ways, I think, if you look for God's hand working in your life, there are other ways that you see God encouraging you. Mm -hmm. For instance, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard a song on the radio. You're in a certain mood, you're in a certain funky mood, and you hear a song come on the radio that just hits you in the right spot and encourages you, and you're like, oh, thank you, God, for that song mm -hmm. there. Or you, you're reading scripture, and it turns out you're not just reading scripture, but scripture's reading you, and you have that special verse that just jumps out at you and is right there for you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that mm -hmm. verse. Or how about this? When you receive a phone call or a text message or an email, or, or what do you call those things on paper that you would use a pen, you yeah, put it in yeah. an envelope? Yeah. A that's note. A, a, a letter. Oh, a letter. A letter, a note, or a card. That's right. <laughs> Old-fashioned technology, you receive one of those encouraging forms of communication, and it seems like just the right time, and it's God intervening and telling you that you can be encouraged, that he is encouraging you. Friends, when there's trouble on the outside and it leads to fear on the inside, we serve a God who encourages the discouraged. So today, we're going to take a look at three things, I think we can even say three spiritual things that we can learn about encouragement and being a source of encouragement to mm -hmm. others. Absolutely. So number one, I want to encourage you, we want to encourage you to encourage others daily, daily. So Every day. why? Because the voices of discouragement those voices of discouragement are so real and so constant. And I'm sure you've had days like that where you just feel like you can't catch a break. You go to work. You know, somebody says something to you about the way you did something or the way you didn't do something. You feel like, man, I really screwed up today. And then you get home and then you kind of somebody, somebody might lay into you at home because you did not do something that you were supposed to do at home. Maybe those dishes are still in the, in the those sink. Those dishes were supposed to be in the sink. <laughs> you know, or, or whatever it might be at home. You know, and then you then your kids might say something to you, and, and, I, and sometimes I'll feel discouraged, like I'm, gosh, man, I'm just not a really good mom. I really kind of let it, you know, kind of yelled at the kids or whatever. So, you know, then we start having those voices, those internal voices become the negative narrative in your life. And so now not only are we hearing it from the outside, it's our own voice on the inside, and we become the source of that discouragement. So that discouragement is constant. It's constant. And so that's why the writer of Hebrews wrote this. Be encouraged, I'm sorry, but encourage, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that no, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. I'm going to read that again. But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, as long as you woke up today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know, sin is sneaks in and tells us those lies that we're not good enough or we're not smart enough or we're not the best kickball player. But here's what the author says. We have to do it daily. Why? When do we do it? We do it daily. Why? Because we will become hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You know, it reminds me of Miss Hansen. That's William's second grade teacher. She made this a part of her daily routine in her classroom. She's like, I want she my did. classroom. I love this about her. She, she wanted her class to encourage one another. So she created a bucket. It was called a bucket filler. And whenever the kids encouraged one another, they would put a token in the bucket. At the end of the year, Miss Hansen gave William an award. It's just, she came up to me, she's like, I've, I've, never ha I've never given this award out. I made this up just for William because he was always the first to encourage someone. They went up on the whiteboard and they did a math problem. He's like, good job. They would be on the playground and somebody would fall down and he'd pick them up. It became a part of his daily routine. At the end of the year, she gave him an award because he filled the bucket with kindness and encouragement. You know, every single day, we should be God's tool. We should be used by God as a voice of encouragement to others. You know, I would love it if we had a rule. If you think it, say it. And, that, and I mean a good thing. If you, think, if you think of an encouraging, loving word to somebody, say it. Don't there wait. Don't wait another day. We need to fill other people's buckets with words of encouragement. I never want to rob somebody of a blessing. If I hold it in, I'm robbing that person of a blessing. But it reminds me that we have to 
renew our mind. If we need to think of something good to say, if we're, if, if we're not renewing our mind and having God renew uh, positive things in our mind, then we're not going to think of anything good. So we have to renew our mind daily so that we can fill others and share those encouraging words with others. So if we think it, we need to say it. We need to, if we think it, then text it. If we think, call somebody up. As soon as you do it, don't let another minute go by because we need to do it. You know, God created us. To, to have this relationship with the people in our life. And God created us to, and, and put us here to encourage one another. But if we are not encouraging the people that God put in our life, they are going to go look other places for that encouragement because it is in, our, it, it is in us, it is who we are to want to feel that encouragement. So if you are not encouraging your kids, if you're not encouraging your spouse, if you're, a, if you're a boss and you're not encouraging your employees, I guarantee you they're going to look somewhere else for that encouragement. You know, in the same way in the church, we need to be a church who encourages one another. And it is so important that we get together consistently, whether it's online or on the telephone. We need to consistently encourage one another in things of God. Because let's, let's be honest here. When you... Being away from church, if you're not watching, if you're not filling up, whether it's daily uh, text messages or the daily check-ins or, or watching the service on Sunday, you kind of fall away from that fellowship. You fall kind of out of that connection with your friends at church. And our spiritual enemy is going to beat us down and beat us down and beat us down. I mean, that's just what happens. And let me tell you, we are not immune to, to being discouraged uh, and hearing those words of discouragement. Not at all. And I think that when we think about the people that we're surrounded, one of the best gifts that we have here at our church family is that we have a lot of overachieving, task-oriented people here. Uh, and one of the characteristics of people who are task-oriented and who consistently perform a, a level up from where they're supposed to perform is that they are in a very good and sometimes a very painful way critical mm -hmm. of their own performance. Mm -hmm. And you don't get better without that, but if you don't watch yourself, you can be so task-oriented and so critical that anytime you even do something fantastic or good, you look at it and, and not only can you not enjoy it, mm -hmm. but you, you, you criticize it and it even looks bad to you. I'd say one of the most, one, one of the, I'm not going to say a one of the worst. Day? Yeah, a rough day. One of the one of the most uncomfortable places to be on Sunday morning is in the steps living room, watching the service on TV. We love the music. We sing along with the music. It's great. And then we get to the message, and you hear the sentence that gets dropped. Mm -hmm. um, you hear that. Or the, you have to reread scripture. Or you have to reread <laughs> scripture. Or or you it's it's okay. It's not on the screen in front of us. Anyway, that or you have to reread scripture or or you, you tell a joke wrong or, or something goes flat and you just tend to dwell on it and we tend to dwell if we're not very mindful mm -hmm. of how we're watching it, our kids just start looking at us like, mom, dad, shut up already. You're ruining the message for us this morning. But it's really easy to, to just get discouraged there when you're watching yourself work, even if it's really good. Um, and, and you all have, who've been here for the last eight years with Melanie and I, you know that I have preached some bombs over the years. I mean, I have thrown some real, some real humdingers there. So, sometimes I see Melanie on the front row just like, dear Lord, help him. Just help him get through it this morning. Uh, but, you know, regardless, there's uh, somebody about six years ago, 88 years old in our congregation, started sending me text messages or leaving me a voicemail every Sunday afternoon saying, hey, Ruffin, great message. You did a great job today. Even when I felt like I bombed, totally stunk up our church, um, he would send me a really encouraging voicemail. And you know, there are weeks that I wouldn't just listen to it once, but I would listen to it twice and three times. And it was just like a healing salve on my soul for that encouragement does wonders for people and i think we need to concentrate on encouraging people daily even when we, when it escapes us when we're task oriented when we're too busy when we don't think about it when we think about we don't need encouragement why should anyone else need encouragement those are the times when we really need to slow down and we need to be intentional about encouraging others 
Uh, so there's encouraging others daily. The second mm -hmm. principle that we have is this. It is encouraging others spiritually. Encouraging others spiritually. How do you encourage others spiritually? That is raising the level of your encouragement from flattery or for something that can benefit you to encouraging others for their own benefit, to draw them closer to God and to make them a fuller, healthier um, individual. So as we think about encouraging others spiritually, we cannot end it there. So just a normal encouragement. What you would tell somebody, hey, great job on that project that you did. Great job. Or hey, wonderful job repainting or, and redecorating your house. You've obviously got a real talent for that, a real eye for that. Or hey, even a, oh, you know what? I really like your haircut. <laughs> Noticing that, that they, and you know, if you don't say that, hey, it'll grow back in six weeks, it'll be okay. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But, but what we see in the scriptures, especially Paul's letter to the Romans chapter one, is that he would not miss an opportunity to encourage someone else. And how many of us say that we're not going to miss an opportunity to encourage somebody else? Here's what he says. One of the things I always pray for is the opportunity. He's always looking for the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. For I long to visit you so that I can bring you some spiritual gift that will help you what? Grow strong in the Lord. We're supposed to be encouraging people in ways that draw them closer to the Lord and make them deeper, more confident individuals. And he goes on to say this, when we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith. But I also want to be, this is the great turnaround here, I also want to be encouraged by you, by your faith. I love the way he says that. And Melanie, I know you've got a story about how you were encouraged yes, by somebody's yes. faith. Yes, so my good friend Brian was a big encouragement going back to 1993. So that in was, 19... <laughs> that was a long yes, time ago. Yes, that was a few years ago. Right, okay, so, so. so in 1993, I was the president of the student body of Wellington High School. in the 1990. Wolverines. Yes. That's right. Sorry. Right. And as, and Brian was the vice, pr vice president. So together, we were able to help coordinate and plan graduation. Well, if you're not familiar, just the year before in 1992, the Supreme Court came down with a ruling which impacted specifically schools and prayer. And we were not allowed to have prayer at graduation and no more baccalaureate. So this was the first year, my year, 1993, no baccalaureate and no prayer. Well, Terrible decision. It was a, it was, it's Terrible. Tough. I'm sorry, go well, ahead. Continue, please. Well, you know, Brian and I kind of talked through this, and since I was asked to speak as the president of the student body, as president of SGA, you know, we kind of worked on how can I incorporate a prayer into my speech. So I did that, but I got a lot of pushback from administration saying, you're not allowed to do this. Well, you know what? My friend, he was like Titus. Brian was like a Titus who came in beside me to encourage me. You know, he even called up Jay Seculo, who has the this, the American Center for Law and Justice. Justice. Yep. You know, and he was able to get some information that I could, you know, confidently then take back to administration. And I don't think I would have had the courage to do that if it wasn't for Brian walking beside me. You know, it's great to have parents and people, you know, encourage you, but he was right there sitting with me in the administration's office. I needed a Titus. I needed Brian to be there with me. And it gave me the courage when it, when it came time for graduation, graduation day, to have the courage to stand up on that stage in front of the 430 students and the other parents and grandparents and friends in the auditorium, in the West Palm Beach Auditorium, and give my speech probably to a thousand people. And I gave an encouraging speech. And at the end of that, I gave a blessing. And I prayed over my fellow students. And I you know, lifted that day up to God. And, and I would not have done that if I did not have somebody encouraging me, walking beside me, telling me that I was filling God's good and, and perfect will by doing this. You know, Melanie, uh, my dad and I were sitting in the nosebleed seats there at the West Palm Beach Auditorium. And you know, not only was Brian encouraging you, and in essence, he was your Titus, just like Titus encouraged Paul, Brian was your Titus. You encouraged the faith of all of us, the thousands of people who were there that you were talking to. There were some people who were a little bit out of shape, but hey, get over it. Um, and But we were there, and we were praying for you, and you know, you took a stand that day, 
And we were so, our faith was so encouraged by you taking a stand. And indeed, there comes a time when we all have to take a stand and people are encouraged, but it feels like you're alone. And you overcame some obstacles mm -hmm. that day. But you know, when we talk about uh, encouragement and being, and being spiritually encouraged, um, not all of us have to overcome those type of obstacles, but we do have obstacles every day. And when we encourage people, it seems like on a much smaller scale, but it's still very profound. Mm -hmm. And that is for sure. For instance, you know, you look at somebody who you admire, who gets along really well, they're encouraging to their spouse, mm -hmm. their husband or their wife. You're like, hey, that is really cool. I'm going to encourage my spouse that same way. I'm going to talk to people the kind way that you talk to your spouse there are other people there are other times when you see people raising their hands in worship like when carol raises her hand when she's up here or when jennifer is here when she's singing raising her hands and i'm like man i want my worship to be like theirs inhabited by the holy spirit or when you ha we have friends who are inviting people to church all the time and it makes me want to be more evangelistic invite more people to church. So there are ways that we can spiritually encourage one another, taking it to the next level. And that last way that we can encourage one another, it's encourage one another daily. There's encourage others spiritually. And lastly is encourage yourself yeah. in the Lord. Encourage yourself. And you know, this is so, I mean, I mean it sounds so weird, but really it feels like we live isolated mm -hmm. lives. And when it said, when we were reading that, that passage from uh, when it said that it, it feels like there's no rest and there's conflict on the outside or battles all around us and there's fear within us. I mean, there are times when you just feel so alone and so discouraged, even when you're surrounded by family, even when you're surrounded by people that care about you, um, you feel like you're under siege and discouraged and so, so low. And friends, we serve a God who encourages the discouraged. You know, it reminds me of one of my favorite characters, of course, King David in the Old Testament. He had a group of people, a large group of people that were out to stone him and kill him. You think you're having a discouraging day? They were out with rocks getting ready to throw him. And here's what David says. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He encouraged himself basically by praising the Lord and by comforting and encouraging himself in that we serve the God who encourages the discouraged. And even when we feel alone, even when we feel abandoned and so, so discouraged, we can encourage ourselves in the Lord our God just like King David did. Well, you know, some people out there are saying, well, I'm not King David, or I'm not even a preacher. <laughs> well, you know, neither neither am I. But, you know. You can preach some, to yourself. <laughs> some days you just have to man up and preach to yourself or mama up. I'm going to call it that. Mama up, and you can preach to yourself. I mean, say these, say the, you know, know the scripture, say the scripture. Just tell yourself, I have faith to do this. My God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And how about this one from last week? If my God is for me, then who could be against me? Listen, sometimes we just have to preach to ourselves, encourage ourselves. Now, listen, one of the places that you can be anything you want to be is in your car. And I know I've seen some of you, and I've even heard some of you. Some of you think you all are gold and platinum artists singing in the car. I mean, you have that plat somewhere, you know, at home. You've got that platinum album hanging on your, on, your, on your wall. Listen, you can be anything you want to be in your car. You can sing to the top of your lungs. Or you can preach to the top of your lungs. I mean, be be traffic preachers and commuter teachers. I mean, I, you know, just <laughs> do it in the car. Encourage yourself. God calls us to encourage ourselves because he is there for us. So there's trouble on the outside, fear on the inside. What do we do? You embrace the truth that we serve a God. We serve a God who encourages those who are discouraged. Even the Holy Spirit is called the encourager. So as God starts to encourage you spiritually, what do you do? You become a gift to others. You encourage others. We encourage others daily. We encourage each other daily. Why? Because we need it. Why? We 
need to have our buckets filled, our hearts filled with that encouragement. So every time you think of that good thing about that person, something that they've done, or you see that they've done it, encourage them. Let them know. If you see it or think it, then say it. Tell them. And we don't just encourage each other, just encourage each other daily. We encourage each other daily spiritually. We want to we want to help them strengthen their walk. We want them to, in all they do, glorify God, whether it's kicking a ball in the soccer field, typing a letter, answering the phone, whatever it is, you know, you are blessed. You have that skill because God has blessed you with that skill or talent. You know, I, I don't want to leave in the dust here, and we would all we would all just love to leave you with a, a just an amazing picture of a church family and a church community that just wakes up every day and everything is wonderful. It's peachy keen, and you're ready to encourage those around you. But hey, life is difficult, mm -hmm. and life comes with built-in challenges that none of us were looking for at the beginning of this year. The Upside, the title of this sermon series, Staying Positive in 2020, is a challenge. And indeed, when you have a tendency, and I'm, I'm not picking on task-oriented overachievers here, but when you have a tendency to get up and start ticking off the things about your day you don't think about and it's not important to you to encourage the people around you, you need to pause and again think about the character of God, the God who we want to be like, in whose image we were created, to be those who encourage the discouraged. Mm -hmm. And friends, I challenge you today to make it part of your daily routine to encourage someone. Friends, if you are married, mm -hmm. you should be practicing saying something encouraging to your spouse first thing every single day. And not just one thing a day, but maybe one thing in the morning and one thing in the evening. It's great to start with two. And if you can get more than that, who knows? Well, that might be a, a, a recipe for a successful relationship in the long haul. Encourage the people around you daily. That second thing is give God a chance to encourage you. And when you receive encouragement from those seemingly coincidental things, those songs coming on the radio, those encouraging text messages or phone calls or voicemails or emails or letters, give God the glory for that. And take that as fuel to encourage someone else. And lastly, friends, we serve, a, I can't say it enough, we serve a God we serve a God who encourages the discouraged and God calls us to be a wellspring of life, no pressure here, raising the bar a little bit. God calls us to be a wellspring of life, indeed to bring the good news to life, to be a source of encouragement for the people who we come into contact with and who God puts on our hearts. Friends, it is not a small calling. It is a tall calling. It is a great calling that we all have. So friends, even with the people that you're most comfortable with and even on the days you don't feel like it, be a source of godly encouragement, encouraging people to grow strong in the Lord in your life. Let's bow our heads and pray today. Gracious God, thank you so much for Jesus, the great encourager. Thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. And Lord, today we ask that those of us who are tired, who are bone weary, Lord, those of us who have been set low and discouraged, sometimes by the people that we love the most or by the loss of a job or a financial hit or Lord, by any number of things, Lord, we pray that you would help us to be people who lean on you, the God who encourages the discouraged. Lord, I pray that you would set it on our hearts to be people who are sources of encouragement. Help us to be task-oriented, Lord. Help us to continue to be overachievers. But Lord, help us to look out for the people that you've given us, especially to love 
today. May we be people who have nice things to say. May we be people who have encouraging things to say. And Lord, when we see people or we have friends who are in trouble, help us to show up and be there with our very presence. God, thank you that you are the God who encourages the discouraged. We worship you this morning and we commit ourselves to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In green pastures he makes me lie down. He restores my soul and leads me on for his name, for his great name. Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me. Shadow of death.